Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today I have a massive, massive speed reviews for you guys, basically recapping all of the makeup that I have tried since the start of 2024 and giving you guys my updated thoughts. So I kind of do reviews as I go along or like first impressions, but I like to always come back once kind of every three months, just depending on how much makeup I've tried in that period and give you guys like my really like, okay, I've tested this for a little while now and here's really, 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 really what I think. Generally, most of the time it stays the same. Sometimes opinions change. But we see. So hopefully that all sounds interesting to you guys. If it does, go ahead and do the YouTube things, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. I have a lot of new makeup. Like I've got like a full kind of container here. It's a lot, a lot. Now I will link all of the things that I truly recommend. Well, actually, I'll try my hardest to link everything down below as long as it fits in the description box. Otherwise, it'll say like, see all the products here, click that link, and it will take you to everything. Just depends on what will fit in the description box. They will be affiliate links though. So if you shop through them, thank Thank you so much. And just a caveat, like none of this is meant to be bragging or anything like that at all. Please know, like I purchased this kind of makeup for a couple of different reasons. One, I'm kind of freakishly obsessed with it and I just love it. I would have a lot of makeup regardless. Two, I do do YouTube and I am fortunate enough that my channel does bring in a little bit of an income. It's not a dramatic income, but it is quite like it's a little bit. And because I also work full time in Australian laws, it's actually more beneficial for me to actually spend all of the money I make back onto my YouTube channel rather than like take it as income. So for now, that's my situation, which is why I also am conscious of how much I'm bringing in that kind of a thing. And that's not, again, not a brag or anything. It's more so like if you are someone looking at this going, how come I can't purchase this much makeup? Like what's she doing? Da 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 da. You know, it's my YouTube channel. It's the support through you guys that I'm able to do this. And hopefully I provide content that you enjoy back. Hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, so don't feel bad at all. You do not need all this makeup, that kind of a thing. This is a judgment free zone. Even if you do want all of this makeup and you go and get it, happy days, judgment free zone. Thirdly, uh, all very much my own opinion. We can have differing opinions. Two things can be true at once and that is totally okay. We just keep it, you know, nice and civil. We're nice around here. We have a lovely community, but it is just my opinion. I'm not a professional makeup artist or anything like that. So yeah, all those little disclaimers. Uh, I'll tell you if I get in, got any of these in PR. I think there's only a couple of things, maybe two or three that I got in PR. The rest I purchased with like my YouTube money. And I think that's it. I will try and have timestamps as well, like breaking them down into categories because this is going to be long. It's going to be long. So first up, primers. I have tried three primers so far this year. The first one, this one was PR. This is the Flower Nose Dewy Hydrating Primer. It comes in this absolutely gorgeous jar right here. And it's like this kind of white texture. And it's like, I actually have a full review of the Little Angels collection on Flower Nose, by the way. And I do recommend you checking it out because the whole collection completely took me by surprise, like truly. But I really like this primer, really like it. It feels like water. It has like, it's not silicone, but it almost feels like a silicone base, but it's like a what? It honestly feels like a lot like the Water Fresh tint from Chanel, but with no tint to it. It is very hydrating on the skin. It's very cooling on the skin. It really soothes my sensitive skin. So I do have sensitive combo skin for reference point. And I just find that this calms everything down and just makes my skin feel really fresh. So I actually really love this. I like to use it quite a bit. I can see myself, particularly in winter when my skin's a little bit drier, I am going to get so, so much use out of this. Uh, for context, I'm in Australia, so it's summer here going into autumn, winter now. But yeah, I really, really like this. And like at this point in time, I would also repurchase this. I really enjoy it and I just love the packaging. Next up is the Danessa Myrix Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. You guys, if you go on my channel and look at like my thumbnails or you put in the search box on my channel, like the product name, it'll come up with any videos with this product being used in it. I have used, I think nearly all of these products in videos. So this is a mattifying and priming face serum. It's actually the primer that I have on today as well. And I, like this one because the packaging is amazing <laughs> so it has this like little drop package it like drop here and then you press the little bottom thing and it like puts out a drop i love it it's so amazing but also it is the thinnest like mattifying serum where it actually you can tell like it mattifies your t-zone it definitely keeps my oils at bay through my t-zone for a really long period of time kind of like the yummy skin blurring balm as well it has that upslight technology but it's so thin on the skin it's like you feel like you haven't put 
any kind of makeup on it all. It's really an incredible product and I really like this. And I think if you're someone that also doesn't want to wear any foundation or anything, but does get oily throughout the day, you could pop this on as like your kind of serum and it's going to keep your like skin a lot matter and like keep those oils at bay for longer. So I actually really have been enjoying that one. I will keep an eye out. So if my skin keeps getting like, for example, in the summertime when it's really humid here, I can see myself like using this all up or even repurchasing it if I used it up. But in the winter, I don't see myself getting as much use out because I find in winter lately, my skin's gone more normal-ish. But when it's super humid where I live, this has been a godsend. And last up is the Milk Makeup Cloud Glow Primer. So I've been testing this for about two weeks now and I love this product as well. It's rare that I'm like that into all of the primers. So this is like a foam. This is what it comes out like. And then you kind of blend it in and it just goes into the skin and again it is so thin and cooling i'm loving that all of these primers are like a cooling feeling lately because that's what i love the most about the chanel water fresh tint so i love that about it it's kind of it feels a little bit slippery greasy ish it's got no tack to it really so keep that in mind but I find that this just hydrates my skin in the thinnest, nicest way. Like even when it's been humid and my skin's been a little bit oily, I have found that this primer has just really, I don't know, kept my, my foundation just looks so nice and plump and hydrated, but it doesn't feel heavy in any way. And I have noticed like this has turmeric in it and it does have a bit of a, what I assume to be a turmeric smell. It's not a fragrance. I think it's just actually the ingredient. So if you don't like that kind of herby smell, you probably won't like it, but it, the turmeric is supposed to be like really calming on the skin. And I have found that like, I haven't been getting any breakouts with this and my redness and stuff has been going like, it's like my skin has been soothed, if you will. So yeah, this as well. I haven't been able to stop using this since I got it recently, A plus. Oh, also in exciting news, it's getting cold enough now for me to wear my own makeup and coffee, like sweaters or jumpers. We call them in Australia. So this is my match. It's linked down below if you're interested, but very exciting. Let's move on to foundation. I felt like I tried more foundations this year, but apparently it's only been this three from what I can see in my collection. If I've missed anything, I'm sorry. Let me know in the comments. So the first one is obviously the Christian Louboutin liquid foundation that they just released. Now I have a full review of this one. This is the shade 20 and it's actually the foundation that I'm wearing today. And it's an odd one because for some reason, some days this foundation looks like a really good match and then other days it looks way too deep. So. I do need to pick up a lighter shade because even you can tell in the swatch here that it is just a little bit too deep really. Now this is a pricey foundation okay so I mean most of this makeup is pricey to be fair let's be real I love my luxury makeup however my opinion on this foundation since my review has not changed I absolutely love it I think it is such a beautiful foundation as you can see like it's so lightweight and like thin and skin like while still being a little bit mattifying it's not the most matte foundation i have ever tried but it does have a bit more of a matte texture to it than not if you will i think dry skin though actually after playing with this and um the other foundation that i'll talk about soon this one a dry skin i really do think as long as you've hydrated your base you'll be able to get away with it just fine but it's just so thin on the skin you can kind of build it up in coverage to be a little bit more full coverage you can make it light coverage medium whatever but it's just the way that it wears is so skin like it doesn't settle in fine lines it smooths texture and as the day wears on it just wears more beautiful like it just makes your skin look so healthy as the day wears on so i absolutely stand by this i love it next up is the sisley phyto tint perfection foundation so this one right here and i got the shade zero and dawn and this one's a good shade match for me actually i think probably out of these whole three foundations that I'm going to talk about today, this one's the best one. So this is zero and dawn and 20 and in the Christian Louboutin. And wow, do I love this foundation. Now this is again, another expensive foundation. It's Sisley. It's also the first Sisley foundation I've tried and I am so impressed. It reminds me a little bit of the pure four in one love yourself -y foundation, but lighter and more skin like if you will so this you can definitely build up to be full full coverage you can sheer it out this one is definitely more matte than the christian louboutin this one i would say this is like a natural 
dipping a toe into a matte finish this is a matte finish so just keep that in mind however because like I said it's been so hot here with the humidity and everything I can wear this and it mattifies and it just wears so beautifully throughout the day it keeps my oils at bay it covers everything gorgeously but it still looks so thin on the skin it doesn't look cakey or heavy at all and it just covers everything perfectly I absolutely love it like this foundation has become such an utter go-to for me I like have to force myself to use other foundations because I've been enjoying it that that much but I can see like in winter I might need to mix in say maybe a little bit of moisturizer or a hydrating like drop of face oil or something in this just it might be a little bit too matte but in saying that I can I don't know we're gonna test that but for me with combination skin and where my skin really is that combination it is pure perfection and what do I recommend between the two of these I think if you want something that's going to keep your oils at bay a little bit more go for the Sisley if that doesn't sound like anything you want maybe go for the Christian Louboutin they both have fragrance in them so keep that in mind as well like either of them might not be suitable for you in that case I like both I listen I'm ridiculous with makeup so I like having both in my collection but they are a little bit similar I think this is more full coverage and it just has more of that matte finish but in terms of like the way that they wear and the texture and everything on the skin they're both absolutely stunning and then lastly I know probably quite a few of you will not care about this foundation but I'm going to give you my thoughts because I've been so pleasantly surprised so this is actually the Kylie Cosmetics Power Plush Longwear Foundation in 2.5 N this one's the lightest it's like I've got Goldilocks here I've got two light two dark and then the perfect but I can make all three of these shades work so this is the 2.5 n in the Kylie the 0.5 n Dawn in Sisley and then the 20 n in Christian Louboutin and you know like I love this I also really love this I picked it up just because honestly the description of it sucked me in like I don't care about Kylie Cosmetics and the Kardashians and all that that doesn't I, like I didn't buy it because I'm a fan or anything. I purely picked it up because of the description. It was like supposed to be like texture smoothing, long wearing, skin like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. I have been so impressed. I have been so impressed. This is like a natural finish. It definitely keeps my oils at bay, but it's not drying in any way, shape or form. It's like a solid medium coverage. You can sheer it out, but you can also build this up. Very thin on the skin, very skin-like, very lightweight feeling. Definitely smooth texture, really long wearing. Like honestly, I've really, really enjoyed this. And actually my recent favorite combination has been mixing the Kylie Cosmetics and the Christian Louboutin together. Now that's extra, you do not need to do that. I just have them, so I mixed them. And they make the most beautiful foundation concoction together. But also this just on its own, it's like this really lightweight, medium coverage skin like foundation it's got a bit more hydration to it than the other two i really like it you guys and it's called long wear honestly it is long wear i have been pleasantly surprised by how much i actually like this and i think like if you took the kylie cosmetics off it for example and didn't really know what brand this was from people would try it and probably be really pleasantly surprised so but you know i know they're controversial whether or not you want to kind of give them your money i get it judgment free zone <laughs> so I am constantly on the hunt for the perfect color corrector for my under eyes I do have darkness pigmentation that kind of a thing on my under eyes so I've picked up quite a few this year I feel like just I don't know if I've been I don't know why but I have picked up quite a few so these two I'm just going to talk about in conjunction so these are the Fenty Beauty one is the matchstick color corrector in the shade rose quartz and the other is the bright fix eye brightener in rose quartz so this one right here is the matchstick in rose quartz and then this is the eye brightener so you can see this one's a bit deeper this one's more matte and drying on the skin this one's a lot more illuminating and like hydrating on the skin I personally really like the bright fix more than I like the matchstick the matchstick is definitely too well it's not too dry it does have some kind of like cream and emollients to it but I think <sighs> It's not that I dislike the matchstick. I do quite like it. And I think if you have oily under eyes, it's probably the way to go. But I really like the Bright Fix, sorry, more just because it is that little bit more hydrating. I also like that it's a little bit of a lighter pink just because I have so many color correctors in my collection that are a little bit too deep for me. That just seems to be the way that it goes for my particular skin tone. And so I have actually been liking mixing this with my deeper color correctors. And it's been making the like, absolute perfect shade so I would actually say like if you're someone like me who really struggles to find a color corrector that's like 
light enough for you but still deep enough. I usually find that most of them are just like too deep of a peach or too deep of a pink. I would recommend like trying something like this and using it as a mix-in because that's what I've been using it for and it's allowed me to like use all of my color correctors that I purchased because we can't return makeup in Australia so when you get it you got to try and make it work you know what I mean? But I do really like the formula of both of these but the Bright Fix is like my preferred one and like this even on its own if it was like the perfect shade it's a bit too light on its own but if it was like the perfect shade on its own for me would be absolutely lovely and perfection as well I also picked up the Rare Beauty what is this called yeah eye brightener I got light medium and I got this I think it was Nikki LaRose actually that was talking about this and I was like okay I need to get it it's Nikki loves it so this is light medium in the Rare Beauty eye brightener right here and I love the little like the applicator has the metal on the end I love it because it's so cooling on the eye you really don't think it'll make that much of a difference but it does and again this one is like too lightweight like it doesn't have enough coverage almost to it on its own but this mixed with another one that I'm about to talk about and also like my Natasha Denona High Glam and stuff like that makes the most perfect color corrector combination. It has changed the game for me, truly. Like this mixed with my Natasha Denona, let me grab it. This one right here is the one that I'm talking about. This is in C1. So I'll do a little swatch here. This is C1 from Natasha Denona on its own. Hopefully that's going to focus. There you go. So that's C1 and that's the brightener. And then when I mix them together, they just create this most perfect shade and finish and formula for my under eyes, pure and utter perfection. And I love it. Like I will be repurchasing seeing this hands down. And in fact, between these two, depending on your like discoloration right because you might need more of a pink tone than a peachy tone so depending on your discoloration but if you're very similar in shade to me and find most of my like kind of like color preferences in that work for you I would recommend the Rare Beauty over this one but if you want more of a pinky undertone for correcting or a pink tone for correcting then definitely go the Fenty and they're both they're kind of similar products in a way so they'll do kind of the same thing I also picked up this Bobbi Brown um, what is it called? Skin Touch Up Palette. It's fair to light and so it doesn't actually have each of the shades. I think this is Bisque, Light Bisque and then Light in the concealer and this is actually the colour corrector that I have on today underneath my concealer and I just mixed kind of all three shades together. Each one individually is not perfect but you know Goldilocks mixed together for me is great and I just I really like the Bobbi Brown stick corrector and I just saw it and was like you know I think that's really good. I like having a color correcting little palette that's got a couple of different shades in it because sometimes, you know, depending on how much sleep I've gotten, my diet, that kind of a thing, my discoloration of my under eyes can kind of change. It can be really dark, it can be a bit better, you know, that kind of a thing. So having the multiple shades really allows me to create like the perfect shade in one. And I really like the formula. So if you love the Bobbi Brown color correctors, I say it's worth a look in. I'll give you actually a swatch of those three. One moment. So, um, that's the top shade, that's the middle shade, and that's the bottom shade of the Bobbi Brown palette. And lastly, this is not technically a colour corrector. I guess it's kind of like a colour corrector slash a concealer, but for me, it needs to be a colour corrector. So, this is the Sisley Fido Sans Eclat Eye Concealer with Botanical Extracts. So, I got the shade 1, and I picked this up off of your guys' recommendation. A lot of you, well, Simply Blair actually started it, and then you guys kind of, like, confirmed with her that I needed to try this. And I really like the applicator. It has that metal applicator and it's so cooling and nice on the skin. And I do have a little bit of this mixed in with my concealer today, actually. So this is the shade one in this particular product right here. And it doesn't look as bad when swatched out, but on my under eyes as a concealer, this is way too deep and peach. Like it's so noticeable. I used it as a concealer once on its own and I just like had this like orange under eye. So for me as a concealer, I can't use it that way, but I have been finding I really, really enjoy it as a color corrector. So I'm not mad. I don't know if I would recommend, no, actually I do know. I don't recommend spending this much money on a product for color correcting when you can get like the Sigma one for I think something like 30-ish dollars on sale or like the Natasha Denona one I think is like 30 or 40 dollars so I really don't recommend spending like this much money but because again I can't take the makeup back I've already got it at least it's 
working really well as a color corrector for me so I will completely use it up. Now I got this because, um, and I'll talk about this soon, I picked up the Chanel Sublimage Concealer and absolutely fell head over heels in love with that. And a lot of you guys were saying that you like the Sisley either just as much or better. So I got really curious and was like, I absolutely have to test this for science. I controversially don't super duper love this formula. I do like it as a color corrector, don't get me wrong. And I do find underneath concealer, it doesn't really impact my concealer formula on top of it. But if I was basing this off a concealer alone and the formula, not so much the shade, I don't super love it. I actually find this to be quite drying on my under eyes and not have enough coverage for me at all. Like I just found you could still see a lot of darkness, like, or just like imperfections and everything coming through. And like, covered a little bit of the darkness in terms of like it corrected it a bit but and I needed a concealer on top of it you know so yeah I don't think this is my be all and end all formula I don't regret picking it up because I was always going to try this no matter what so I needed to get it out of my system but I probably wouldn't recommend personally picking that up but again personal choice right let's move on to concealers let's talk about my chanel sublimage concealer first so i picked up the shade 10 i also did a full review of this concealer as well so that's the shade 10 right there i think this might be the best concealer actually that i've just ever tried i absolutely love it it's pipped the post or it's like tied evenly maybe inching slightly in front of my urban decay quickie concealers it's one just this lovely shade. I finally found a shade of concealer that just like one shade works for me. Normally I have to mix two for some reason. I love how hydrating this is while not being greasy or creasy on the under eyes. It doesn't feel like it's gonna like melt off throughout the day. I also love how it smooths my texture. It plumps my under eyes up, but it also has coverage. My goodness, this concealer, where has it been all my life? Yes, it's expensive. It's going to last me forever though. Like it really is because such a small amount goes a long way. It layers well. Like I can't say enough good things about this Chanel Sublimage concealer. Truly, it has blown me away. Another concealer that's blown me away is actually these Fenty Beauty Wear Even Hydrating Concealers. So I've got the shade 120N and 140N. They are not that different of a shade to each other. Online, they looked a lot more different to each other, but you know, it's fine. I still mix them and it's all good. Normally, I find it rare that I like a uh, Fenty concealer or foundation. It's not normal for me. So this one is 120 and this is 140. Really good shades. I like mixing them together, but either shade is completely fine for me, to be honest with you. This concealer is awesome. Like, if it had probably like 30% more coverage, it'd be right up there for me with like the Chanel and the Urban Decay Quickie. It is so beautiful. It's smoothing, it's hydrating, it's lightweight. It does have decent coverage considering it's a medium concealer. So if you don't need like, like my definition of full coverage for a concealer is very high. Like I expect it to really cover, cover, you know? So if you're not that fanatical about it, then you'll probably find this is enough. But I just find this wears so beautifully, smooths, long wearing, makes my under eyes look super healthy, like really, really impressed, would repurchase when I use up. Really have been impressed. One that I have been unfortunately disappointed by and I really wanted to like it is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots Concealer. So this one right here, I got the shade Fair Neutral 11. A little bit deep for me um, on its own, but I can get away with it. You know me, I usually can mix my concealers anyway, but this one's Fair 11 right here. And this just is a bit drying of a concealer and just not enough coverage. Like it's just, it's not wowing for me in any way. I do not want to repurchase it. Um, I actually picked it up because Doriza is dead, like really raved about it. But yeah, for me and like my makeup preferences, it just did not have enough coverage, was too drying and just didn't make my under eyes look any better. So yeah, that one's definitely a miss for me. I also have a full review of the new Laura Mercier concealer. So the Real Flawless Weightless Concealer. I have zero and one, a bit light for me. It's always the way it's either too light, too dark, <laughs> but I can get away with it still. So that's one N in the Real Flawless. And I actually am wearing this concealer mixed a little bit with the Sisley because that's so light on its own today. This is nice. If you are someone that wants like a medium to light coverage concealer, looks very natural and almost like, if, if you're like a no makeup makeup wearer, I think you'll really, really like this. For someone like me, again, when once this is used up, I'm not gonna repurchase it. It's kind of, it wears nice. Like it really does wear really nice throughout the day. It makes my skin look good. It's just not got quite enough 
like coverage behind it and then also not enough like plumping or something. It just doesn't make my under eyes look super duper amazing like what the, say the Chanel does or the Fenty does. So it is a not straight down the line nice concealer and I can see for a lot of people this might be their holy grail but for me I just I want more. I want more coverage and I want more plumping if you will. Let's talk about face powders. I've surprisingly also tried a lot of these. These two I did get in PR. These are fluorescent powders. So this one is the fluorescent Flawless Jade Breathable Pressed Powder. So this one right here, it is like, so it has like this cushion, it comes with the puff and it's clear. It's actually the setting powder I'm wearing all over my face today. And I actually quite like this. If you are someone that's just looking for like a straight down the line kind of mattifying translucent powder, you want it pressed, but you still want it to be like really, really like finely milled. Like it is so finely milled and has like the softest of softest, subtle, subtle glows to it. So it's not completely flat. Then you might like that. This one I also got in PR. This is the fluorescent blurring pressed powder and it has a slight tint to it and it's nice but I wouldn't say that this is anything revolutionary I don't think it's as blurring as what some of the others that I'm going to talk about are I also don't think it's as long wearing I don't mind having it like I, I don't mind using it and rolling it through my collection if I don't have to do like if I wouldn't put it on for work for example but if I have a dinner or something but I think there's other powders I'd rave over that one I got the Shantikai Perfect Blur Finishing Powder for Christmas. My mum got me this. So this one right here, I'd been wanting to try it for a really long time. And as a setting powder, if you will, like how I would normally use my setting powders, this is not it for me. It's too cakey and like shine-like in a weird way. But how I use this is like as a finishing powder and that's how I've actually used it today. So I usually get like my Sonia G Smoother, Smooth Buffer Brush and I'll just pick up a little bit of the product. And at the end, when I finish my makeup I'll just like pick up a small amount and like smooth everything over and that's when I feel like this product really shines as in like that's when I feel like it fully like blurs my skin and just like gets rid of any harsh lines and I just kind of look almost like that airbrushed filtered effect which I do really really like do you need to spend that much money on a setting powder for or like a finishing powder if you will that's gonna be up to you and your makeup preference like if you have oily skin, I would say just stick with like whatever works for you. But if you have dry skin, you don't even use powder, then maybe something like this as a finishing powder works perfectly. Like that's going to be a personal preference thing. But for me as like an actual setting powder, it was too cakey. It enhanced texture and it did not last long at all. But as a finishing powder, it is stunning. Next up, we have the YSL All Hours Hyper Finish Powder in the shade one. This one I actually have on my under eyes today and I don't mind this. It looks really dark in the pan, but actually goes on lighter on the face, which is good. I mean, look, this is nice. I wouldn't say this is a holy grail powder for me. I wouldn't repurchase it personally. I think like considering it's the All Hours line, I probably would have expected it to be a little bit more matte and like longer wearing. I do find this is something that I need to touch up throughout the day, like my skin does want warm up to it quite quickly and kind of get those oils coming through and all that kind of stuff so it doesn't hold them all at bay or at least hold them at bay and like look you know some powders just look quite nice as even as the oils are coming through I don't find that with this one it definitely needs a touch up I don't mind it on my under eyes I do think it's it's quite nice on the under eyes but not better than my make powder so yeah this one I would probably say maybe if you have normal skin you might really like this but that could also be very much a personal preference thing for me. Like other people with oily skin might find this is enough. But I think if you have like dry normal skin, you might actually like this as kind of like a dusting over the face. Next up is the Sigma Soft Focus Setting Powder in Vanilla Bean. So just kind of like a loose pressed powder. I really like this. It's honestly just reminds me of like the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, not the ultra blur one, but like the OG one. It's great if you have oily skin and you just need a setting powder to set and forget truly then that's what this is great for i wouldn't necessarily like recommend it for like dry normal skin unless you're going to use like the finest of dustings but if you're someone like me where like when it's summertime you need to like really set your face it's great. I do really like it. I think Sigma, as per usual, is always underrated. And then this last powder, I've not seen anybody ever talk about this brand, really. I picked it up when I got my Danessa Myricks Groundwork like two Blooming Romance palette. I just saw this and was like, okay, I'll give it a go. I'm obsessed. 
I'm obsessed, but this isn't gonna be for everyone. I talk about it in a video, it's either up or ready or coming. This is the new Face Atelier Glass Skin Water Powder, and I'm not gonna be able to show you like on the screen, but it basically looks like a white translucent powder, right? But when you put this on the skin, as you press it in or as you touch it and like blend it out, it blends out like water. And I know that sounds really weird and it sounds like it's gonna lift all of your makeup. And I thought the same thing, like when I first tried, I was like, oh, this is gonna go bad. I personally do not recommend using this with a brush. Maybe I'm wrong, but for me, um, powder puff, just pressing it into the skin, it has been the way to go. When I tried to use it with a brush, that's when it kind of like got a bit watery and like catched on things. I don't know what magic this is, but this sets my face all day, but it looks so natural and thin. It doesn't feel like I have powder on, but I have powder on. Like my oils are kept at bay and it wears so naturally. It's smoothing. It like, I, I don't know what wizardry is in this, but holy dooly, this is incredible. I, I don't know what it does. I don't know why it's so good. I think any skin type can probably use it. Um, if you've got oily skin and you try this, let me know how it goes for you because this truly has just set my face every day that I've used it and I haven't had to touch up and my skin has looked immaculate. Like I've even had, I've had a lot of migraines and stuff lately. So in the afternoons, I've been having to take like naps and stuff and it's kept my makeup flawless. Again, don't know what wizardry. I know there's been water powders, like I think Becca had like a hydro blur powder or something like that. I never actually tried any of them. So I don't know if it's quite similar to that or if it's different, but whatever this is, is magic in a compact or like a little tub. And I love it, obsessed obsessed. Moving on to cream and powder bronzers. I have tried surprisingly a large amount of these. Um, first up, I picked up the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in Amber. And I feel like I got this maybe in like a Christmas sale or something. So this is Amber right here. And I'd wanted to try it for a while. And like, sorry, I wanted to try it for a while because it's really a straight contour shade for me. And it's actually the cream contour that I'm wearing today. And I really like this, like specifically for a cream contour and not any hint of like a bronzer or anything in it. I think this is an awesome shade. I really like the formula. It is like a more matte formula. So it's not ultra creamy, but I personally like that. I mean, you kind of want that for a contour anyway, so that it has those shadow effects. So I think if you're someone that's looking for a straight stick contour, that's a great option. I also picked up like the little Christmas, actually, let's just talk about all three of these products at once, shall we? Um, I picked up a little Christmas set of the Westman Atelier sticks and it came with the Petal Cream Blush, the Nectar Lipstick and Biscuit Contour. I've had Biscuit a long time ago when it very, very first dropped and I was obsessed then and I'm just as obsessed now. <laughs> so that is Biscuit right there from Westman Atelier. Absolutely beautiful. So creamy, so blendable. It's a really nice neutralish shade for me. So it's not too bronze, not too contoury and it just wears so well. It's blurring and just so, it's so beginner friendly as well because it is so easy to apply and blend out. So yeah, this is definitely a top, top cream, like bronzer slash, yeah, I did, let's just say cream bronzer product in my collection. Then what else came in those is the Nectar Lipstick, which is this one right here, and the Petal Cream Blush. And I have tried the lipstick in the past, not Nectar, but the original one. But I haven't tried the cream blush before. So in the middle there, if you can see, is Nectar and then that's Petal. One, the cream blush. Gorgeous. So many people rave about the Westman Atelier cream blushes. I can totally see why. They are absolutely stunning. More of like a soft matte finish, but again, easily blendable. Can apply well over powder. Just so natural on the skin. Beautiful shade love. And then Nectar, normally I don't like the lit sticks and I don't know if it's just like I hated my original one. And I don't know if this is like my preference is changing or if it, this to be fair does not feel as sticky as the original lit stick that I had. But I really like this as like a very, very soft and subtle natural liquid highlight or like, yeah, let's just call it a liquid. It's not a liquid. It's like a cream highlight. Sorry. I really like it. It really does just look like a lit from within, soft and subtle glow. I still like to set it with a little bit of highlighting powder because it has a little ever so soft tack, but it is nowhere near as tacky as what the other lipstick I had was. So I don't know if it's a different formula. Well, like I said, my preferences have changed, but I actually really like it. And if you are in the, like on the hunt for a really, really natural like cream highlight, then definitely have a look at that one. And then I picked up the Stila Blush and Bronze Hydro Blur 
were Cheek Duo in Apricot and Golden. So one side is a cream bronzer and the other side is a cream blush. And oh my gosh, this does, I haven't seen anyone talk about these and they should be, truly they should be. These are brilliant. That is golden and that is apricot in the stiller. And as you can see, like compared to these two, it is a true bronzer. Wow. <laughs> Wow, these are so good. Hydro Blur is exactly how I would describe it. They are so blurring, so easy to blend out, super long wearing, has a great shade range. Really good if you just like want something small for your collection where you've got one cream blush, one cream bronzer. It's got both of the ends. Just why is nobody talking about this? Like I know that still is like an older brand and doesn't hasn't come out with anything super duper exciting in a long time, but like seriously, these are so, so good especially if you're looking for like that true bronze, but they do have other shades. There might be like an undertone that's a bit more neutralish as well or cool toned. Just so good. Even the cream blush is delightful, goes over powder really well as well. It's just, ugh, can't recommend enough. And then lastly, the Good Apple or the KVD Good Apple Bronze and Contour. So I got the shade Fair, 100 Fair. <sighs> Again, can't stop using this either. Like the shades look kind of weird in the pan, but then when you put swatch them, they're like perfect. So I've done this so awkwardly. Hopefully you can see right here. So this is the cool tone, the bronzer, and then mixed together. Sorry, I know I've swatched that horribly. I love this. Like I love this. If you like the KVD Good Apple Balm Foundation, like you like that formula, you will love this. But even if you say maybe don't like that formula all over your face because it's like a bit too hydrating or whatever, think of that formula though as like a concentrated bronzer. So good, so good. Little goes a long way, little goes a long way. Easily blended, beginner friendly. Like you can, you know, make, mix and match your shade. You can do the straight contour, whatever it is. <sighs> Truly so so good and sign up to like the KVD website because they've been having a lot of like random 30% off sales lately and including these, but I cannot recommend this product enough, truly. I just, I don't know why more people aren't talking about them. I really don't. Now on to powder bronzers. The All Hours bronzer. So this is the All Hours Hyper Bronzer. I got the shade one. I have used this in a video as well. I mean, this I feel like broke the internet. They basically sold out like instantly wherever they got released. I got mine off Selfridges. Um, still hasn't come out in Australia for my fellow Aussies. So yeah, I'd definitely check out Selfridges. This is such a good bronzer. And shade one looks like it's not gonna be deep enough for me, but on the face, it's like the most perfect natural bronze color. Like it's really a stunning shade. It's like not too over the top. It's very natural and very subtle. And the formula is delightful. So blurring, so like, Perfection. It's perfection. This is one of the best bronzers I've ever tried. Honestly, I absolutely adore it. And when they restock, I highly recommend checking it out. Like it is, oh, and especially like if you're someone that is really heavy handed with your bronzer or you're a bit nervous about it, like the lighter shade, if you're my skin tone is really, really like beginner friendly or just like, if you're like me, heavy handed friendly. <laughs> I also picked up the Westman Atelier Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. So this one right here, I know this isn't a new one. You know, I just really like Westman Atelier and I've wanted to try this for a while. And I also, wow, butter bronzer. I know that's like a physician's formula product as well, but like this being called butter bronzer as well, like I get it. It really is buttery on the skin. It's very, very beautiful. A little bit more pigmented or like more oomph to it than say like the all hours, but that's also because this is a deeper shade. Very blurring, very soft and ethereal on the skin. Yeah, everything about this is gorgeous. I will say I don't super love the scent. It's quite a strong chemically scent, which I don't want a fragrance in it, but this just, it does have a little bit more of a chemical scent than like, most like I can smell it from here and normally I can't. However, this on the skin is just so natural, very long wearing and just very soft and blurring. I just, and also the packaging, like I just love Westman Atelier. I did pick up this Christian Dior, Dior Forever Natural Bronze Glow in pink bronze. I couldn't help myself with this embossing. Like it's the one that's got a little bit of the blush and highlight in it. Look, it's nice. It's nice. Is it anything revolutionary? No. <laughs> It's not. It's just kind of like a matte bronzer and it has like this little hint. I'm sure there's a lot of people that super duper love this because I know there's a lot of people that really love just the straight Dior Forever bronzer. I just, for some reason, me and Dior, our makeup style, we clash. Like it's just not a brand that anytime I try their products, I'm like absolutely blown away. I do like their eyeshadows though. Um, I mean, there is, don't get me wrong, there's products that I love, but yeah, this is not a run, don't walk product for me. Like the YSL and the Westman Atelier, for example, I'm like, 
I mean, everyone's value of a dollar is different, so don't take this literally, but they're like, run, don't walk, they're so, 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 so good, I can't say enough good things, whereas this one, I'm like, eh, you could skip it, you know? It didn't wow me enough. Another bronzer that did wow me, though, probably not as much as the Westman and the YSL, but still wows me, still very much up there, is the Shantakai bronzer. So I also got this as a gift at the start of the year, and this is the one in Sirena or Sirena gorgeous it's kind of like you know how i was saying um the shantakai blur powder like it's like this beautiful finishing pattern it just like softly blurs and everything that's what this is like it's very much a blurring soft buildable bronzer like really great beginner friendly bronzer as well or like mature skin for, like just anyone friendly to be honest with you as long as it has a shade match because let's talk about their shade range it sucks but in terms of the actual formula it's like kind of this gel to powder and it's soft, ethereal, buildable, lovely, divine. Absolutely gorgeous. Has the softest of soft glow without being texture enhancing whatsoever. And then randomly, this is random. I also picked up the REM Beauty bronzer in the shade Center Voicemail. So it's a very light shade, which I wasn't anticipating. And it's actually the bronzer that I'm wearing today. And I actually really like it. I really do. I will say I like the YSL All Hours more. So you can kind of see they're similar-ish in shade, right? This one's a little bit more of like a bronze bronze, whereas this is a little bit more neutral on the skin. Um, but they are a similar formula. Like this is very, very soft and blurring on the skin and very, very natural. So again, if you're someone that's like really heavy handed with the bronzer and just needs a little help, like great formula. And it really is, it, like when you feel it, it feels like a suede almost. Like it's really a lovely, lovely formula. It feels like a luxury formula. It doesn't feel like your standard just like matte powder bronzer or anything. So I've actually been really pleasantly surprised with how much I've enjoyed this particular product from REM. Highlighters. I, apart from the Nectar lipstick, I haven't tried any other liquid ones, but I have tried three powder ones. So this one I did get in PR. This is the Flower Nose Little Angels um, Chanting Anthem Highlighter. I mean, one, look at the packaging, right? And the embossing. Ugh. Again, I do have a review of this. I love this highlighter. Love intense love it is so natural on the skin like you look at that and you're like oh gosh no but then you put it on the skin and like is it gonna pick up it's so natural like you can build this up to be blinding or you can build this up to be like a liquid highlight almost on the skin and it is gorgeous gorgeous they have a few shades i think that should suit most skin tones but it is so natural and like lit from within mm, phenomenal i also picked up the kevin aquan opulent finishing powder in incandescent which i haven't really seen anyone talk about this either i really liked the look of it it really intrigued me and it's nice like it's a very natural highlight it's not as like like the flower one i don't know i find highlighters really hard to show on camera it's just this one right here the flower nose one is more of a liquid in a powder form this one is a bit more like powder formula. You can, like, I wouldn't say it's as natural as the flower nose, but it's still very, very beautiful on the skin, very, very soft on the skin, and definitely one of those ones you can build up or really like keep quite natural. Doesn't it enhance texture or anything like that. Like, I do quite enjoy it, but I will say the flower nose one's like blows me away a little bit more. And then I also picked up the Chanel Lumiere de Lotion. I've probably butchered that. This is their spring highlighter. This is the highlighter I'm wearing on my face today with no liquid highlight underneath. And this one is really nice. Very, very pretty. It has like a shift to it. The one thing I will say about this is it has a glitter speck in it. So if you don't like a glitter speck at all, definitely do not pick this up like at all just don't even bother because it does have that little glitter speck i don't mind it like on the face once i've kind of put setting spray on it really does melt down and there's you really you kind of can't see it all but i think there are better highlighters on the market i will say that but if you like a glitter speck then run don't walk because i think you'll love it let's move on to the cream blush and powder blush section which <laughs> I have a crazy amount, but a lot of these I got as gifts and quite a few I got in PR. Let's talk about these because I've spoken about them a heap already on my channel. The Glaminatrix liquid blushes or lip and cheek flushes, I think they're called. Run, don't walk. Run, don't walk. They're incredible. They are a mix between the Rare Beauty liquid pinch blushes and the House Labs pigment paints in the best way possible. They are very, very thin, very, very natural, pigmented enough that there should be a shade to suit all skin tones, but just so undetectable and flawless on the skin, go well over powder. 
I can't, I can't rave about them enough. And the shade range is amazing. I absolutely love them. Like run, don't walk. I also picked up the KVD Good Apple Cream Blush Duo in Elusive Orchid, Orchid sorry. And wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. I absolutely love it. And I love mixing the shades together of these or just, so like this is the one half, one half, and then mixed together. And it is again, that KVD Good Apple Cream Foundation type formula, but in the blush, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like it's quite pigmented. So like, but not as pigmented as say the Rare Beauty liquid blushes, very long wearing, just hydrating on the skin, but not texture enhancing, just absolutely beautiful and divine. Like I want more shades of this. I absolutely love it. I do not need more shades because I have a ridiculous amount of blush, but I do. I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I got these two cream blushes in PR from Flower Nose. This is part of their Little Angels collection. So one is called Rose Ashes and the other is Paradise Poet. And they do have other shades and these are awesome. They're like a matte cream blush. So if you want something that's a little bit more matte and not so kind of hydrating on the skin, that's the Rose Ashes and that's Paradise Poet. Then you'll really really like these they again go really well over powder they're very blurring very buildable like you know like beginner friendly in the sense that like they're not super super pigmented you can build them up beautiful shade and beautiful finish like they just look really natural and blurring on the skin and again like the packaging is divine so yeah absolutely love them if you've been eyeing them off as well i also picked up in one of their sales the sigma beauty cream blush in coral dawn and this reminds me actually of the LYS cream blushes. So if you like them, you'll like this. Very, very pretty. It's a lovely cream blush. It's actually the cream blush I'm wearing today underneath my powder blush that I'm wearing. Goes well over powder, buildable, you know, all of the things, blurring, smoothing, everything I love about a cream blush. And the thing that I love about these is you can get these on such a good price because Sigma so often has heavy discounts on their website. And I just think their makeup products are really underrated. They also have a really nice shade range of these. And like, I think the packaging and everything is really cute. So worth a look in. I actually was super duper lucky and I got two Tom Ford blushes as gifts. Oh my gosh, I just dug one in and ruined the pan. Anyway, it's fine. I got two Tom Ford blushes as gifts. So this one right here is Brazen Rose and this one right here is Sun Drunk. Very, very beautiful. I know these are older products, but I haven't tried them. Absolutely love them. So blurring and smoothing and buildable on the skin. You're going to hear me say this a million times. That's my criteria for a blush. Blurring, buildable natural on the skin. And I love these. I think, you know, if you've been eyeing these off because you're a Tom fan, Tom Ford, like lover, I can recommend them. They're absolutely gorgeous. I also got as a gift, this Christian Louboutin uh, blush and highlighter palette. Isn't it stunning? This is delicate. Oh, these are gorgeous. <gasps> It's fine. It's fine. I actually knew that did that and I forgot. Sorry. I was supposed to return it and then I couldn't be bothered. I need to super glue it back in. Don't panic. It's fine. So these two blushes are absolutely gorgeous. This is more of a matte formula. This is more of a shimmer formula. And then you have the highlight and they're just, they're absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. The highlighter is really quite natural and non-texturizing, but you can build it up to be quite blending. And then the blushes are really kind of like, um, they're a baked kind of gel blush formula, if you will. So they have like a little bit more of a sheen to them, but not texture enhancing. I really, really like them. I think, and just like the packaging, I'm loving Christian Louboutin at the moment. Absolutely loving. I also picked up one of the REM Beauty blushes. This is in Peach Planet, and it's actually the powder blush that I'm wearing today. And I really like this, really like it. And again, it's like this like suede type formula like velvet almost it's not a straight just powder formula absolutely beautiful blurring buildable smooth natural on the skin you know all of the same but i actually really really like this like the suede type feel of this powder is something special and i definitely like i know rem beauty is not really necessarily a luxury brand it's not usually geared towards like anyone over 30 it's more like you know these ariana grande fans that kind of a thing but truly the blushes and the bronzes are worth the peep they really are. I also got the mini My Dream blush and glow palette from Natasha Denona. This one took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to like it. I don't normally like her blush formula, but this is actually really pretty. I don't use all three shades together. Like these are the two blushes mixed together and then this is the highlight. Very gorgeous. Like the highlight is non-texturizing and you can build it up or make it quite natural. And the blush is very, very natural and smooth looking on the skin. So yeah, I think this is really cute and I like how little it is for like travel and stuff, so cute. And then lastly, I picked up two Chanel blushes over my time. One is the 
Rose Polare, I think it's how you pronounce it, from the Labeja's Healthy Winter Glow Blushes. This is a run, don't walk type blush. I don't even know if you can still get it because I think it was limited edition, but wowee, I have raved about this blush for a while now. Absolutely mesmerizingly beautiful. It is the most perfect like winter bitten blush. Like, you know, when you're out and it's super cold and your cheeks just get that beautiful little pink flush. That's what this gives you. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, can't recommend it enough. It really is like healthy glow. It's perfection. And then this is from their spring collection right here. And this is a more of a, just like a matte blush. It doesn't have any glow to it. And I do really like this. I actually like these two shades mixed together. I think they look really nice mixed together, but I will say if you were like eyeing off one of the Chanel blushes. So that's one of the shades, one of the shades, and then that this one's mixed together. If you are eyeing off either of these blushes, if you can still get the Winter Glow, I do recommend the LaBeige's Winter Glow over this one, unless you want a strictly matte blush, but this is still very beautiful and I love the shade. But the Winter Glow from the LaBeige's collection is like, <sighs> something special you guys it is something special all right you guys we're on the home stretch i have a couple of brow products a couple of mascaras and lip products to left okay and if you want to see all of the palettes that i've tried so far this year i did just recently put up a video ranking all the palettes that i've tried since the start of 2024 so that's like my thoughts on the eyeshadow palettes i have three brow gels one is the new benefit precisely my brow gel one of the gels in my brows right now the rare beauty brow gel and also the Make Beauty Clear brow gel. So these two are clear, this is like tinted. And I also have the Make Beauty Clear gel through my brows as well because I have very strong brows. So I use the Benefit like precisely my brow to like thicken and plump and give me a bit of tint and then this to like hold them in place. So let's start with the Make. Awesome. One, very luxe. It's like hefty. It's like this like metal-y type feeling. I really like the wand as well because it has like this like, I don't know if you can see. It's like a raised size and then a flat side. I really enjoy that. I can really get into like the brows and flick them up. And I find this to be really strong holding, really, really strong holding. So I would repurchase that. The Precisely My Brow Wax, it has actually a very similar wand to the Make, but it just, it, it's in, I got 3.5. And I, again, I really, really like this. It kind of just like thickens and plumps my brows um, and feathers them in a really nice way. The Gimme Brow gives me more thickness, but I actually think I like this one more because sometimes the Gimme Brow might be a little bit too much where I've found this is actually like just the perfect amount of like thickening and tinting while still feathering. I actually do like that one a little bit more than the Gimme Brow. And then this Rare Beauty one, unfortunately just doesn't hold my brows enough. Like I do have strong brows for some reason. So yeah, I wouldn't repurchase this. I know it was limited edition anyway, but yeah, it's just not strong holding enough. So I would give that one a skip personally. Four mascaras, which is ridiculous. I do not need to try four mascaras. But anyway, the Give. I love the Give mascara. Love. It is like, oh no, the little tubey thing came out. Gosh darn it. Fixed it. Yes. Okay. Calm down everybody. Um, so this is the Give wand right here. Is it going to focus? There we go. I love the wand. It's really, I like the little ball bit at the end. You can like flick it up with the end of your lashes. Um, this is like falsies in a tube. Falsies in a tube. Doesn't flake. It's not a tubing, so it's just like a normal formula. Not waterproof or anything. Doesn't flake. Really long wearing and like falsies in a tube. I've really been impressed with the, uh, the Give mascara for sure. I would even consider repurchasing, although I have so many. And apparently I just like keep trying new ones nowadays. My favorite kind of like natural belly there mascara is the Lethal Cosmetics. So that's actually what I'm wearing on my lashes today. And this is in the shade brown, so not black. And this is a tubing mascara as well. Come on, there we go. So it's just like a normal kind of plasticky wand. And yeah, I really like this as just an everyday natural fuss free mascara where I just want something on my lashes but nothing crazy and it's tubing which you know I love if you're a tubing mascara generally I'm gonna love you because I love how easy breezy it is to take off at the end of the day so if you have been thinking about giving this a go and you just want like a really soft natural mascara recommend I also tried the KVD new mascara it's a uh, long defined tubing mascara and this is also well like I just said a tubing mascara 
I do like it because it's a tubing mascara, but it's not one that I would repurchase. It hasn't wowed me enough. I have other tubing mascaras, like the Victoria Back and Future Lash, for example, that wows me more. So the tubing side of it is great, but yeah, it just doesn't give me quite enough of them. It's not a terrible mascara. I'm not mad at it, but I just wouldn't repurchase it personally. And then lastly, the Lisa Eldridge Kitten Lash. I hated this the first time I tried it, like hated. And then after the formula thickened, because you know, sometimes like you need a mascara open for a few days before you can really like figure out the formula. Once the formula thickened, this be I obsessed. It is like bolsies in a tube. Now it's water resistant, so it's not waterproof, but water resistant. So it doesn't flake or budge or anything, but you will need like an oil cleanser to get it off at the end of the day really for it to come off easily. But I find it does come off incredibly easily with my normal like makeup oil remover. Thingy, but I would repurchase this hands down. It's like proper falsies in a tube. It really is. Home stretch. Let's talk about some lip balm slash lip oils. I got the Rare Beauty Nearly Neutral Balm, this one right here. And it also came with the lip liner, which is in my collection. It's nice. I wouldn't repurchase this, but it's a nice balm. Like I actually have it over the lipstick that I'm wearing today. It's nice and hydrating and I like the shade of it actually, but I just wouldn't <sighs> It doesn't blow me away enough to run out and repurchase it, but I also do really like it and it is really moisturizing on the lips. So if you're like a Rare Beauty fan and you love the shade, then go for it. I recently picked up the Milk Kush lip oil and I really like this. I got this pink one, which is Dream Machine. Lovely, but it does have like, again, like a herbally scent to it because it is like got the Kush oil in it. Yeah, it has like a herbally scent to it. It doesn't have a taste or anything to it, but I really like it. It's a very lightweight oil. So it's not like a thicker lip oil or anything like that. Very, very lightweight, but very, very moisturizing on the lips. Like I've, I've really enjoyed it to the point where I could see myself using this up and repurchasing it. Um, it definitely makes my lips feel really nice and hydrated. Another one, actually, I've just realized I'm nearly through this and I'll probably repurchase it. <laughs> this is the Summer Fridays, I think it's Pink Cloud lip oil. And I don't know if it's gonna show can you see on camera that I'm like down to here? I don't know if it's gonna show. I really like this. This one's a little bit more of a thicker formula than the Kush lip oil, but not in a bad way. It's still very, very thin and lightweight and like that lip oil kind of texture on the lips, but it has a little bit more heavy duty behind it than the Milk one. But compared to their lip balms, it's a lot thinner and sheerer of a formula, but still very, very hydrating and like has a lot of longevity to its moisturizing on the lips. So I do really like this Summer Fridays one and I, I absolutely can see myself repurchasing that for sure. Like the fact that I've almost nearly used that up should tell you everything. A lip gloss that I absolutely hate, like hate, I hate this, is the Gucci lip glosses. Has anyone tried these? They suck. They suck. So this is, I don't even know what shade this is, Bertha Pink or something. And the thing that I hate about these, the smell and the taste. It's not even, it's not a fragrance. It's like a, um, I also don't super love the doe foot by the way, cause it's very flimsy. It's like, cause this is a plumping lip gloss. It has that like, you know, Fenty heat almost smell, but even stronger. It is the strongest like chemically smell and then you can taste it. It's not even a fragrance taste. You can just taste like the chemicals of this formula. It is horrible, horrible, hate it. And it does burn a little bit on the lips, but I didn't care about that. It's just the smell and the taste. Can't stand it. I had to pick up the new limited edition Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet set. I mean, look at the packaging. <laughs> I just love it so much. So I got the shade Midnight and 600. This is in my Chanel Spring review as well. These lipsticks, oh, wow, they're impressive. They're so comfortable on the lips. My goodness, I really like these. Very, very pigmented, like that one swipe pigmentation. I love the packaging so, so much. So this is Midnight and this is 0600. Absolutely spectacular. If you love a Chanel lip, go for it. It's not a satin, but it's not a matte. It's still quite hydrating, doesn't give me butthole lips or anything, but because it's so intensely pigmented as well, it's quite long wearing. So yeah, I find them to be like, you don't need to like reapply them constantly throughout the day like you would like a normal satin lipstick, but I just, they're absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The lipsticks that are taking the cake for me are these Westman Atelier Suede lipsticks. I want every shade, every shade. 
because they are amazing. So I started with two. I started with Le Rev, no, Je Rev and Piquois. And then now I've also added Lacquer, I think it is. So I will swatch these. I've already, like, again, I've had these in a video. I can't stop wearing these. I cannot stop wearing them. They are, I might, no, let's just tie them with Lisa Eldridge, but like they're in the running to maybe pip Lisa Eldridge, but I'm so devoted to Lisa Eldridge, so I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, this is Piqua, Piqui, and then this is Jurev, and then this is Lacquer. And lack is actually what's on my lips today with the Lisa Eldridge 1N lip liner, which I only just got, so that's not included in today's review. And the Rare Beauty lip balm. The pigmentation that these have is insane. One swipe pigmentation. Wow. Wow. It is more of like a, it's a suede. I wouldn't even call it a soft matte. It is definitely a suede formula. So it's not a satin, but it's not a matte. I don't find it gives me like butthole lips or anything like that. Um, I do not find it dries my lips out. I had did see some comments. Um, I'm really behind on answering comments. Sorry guys, I will catch up, I promise. But I did see some comments saying like, they've seen people say that this like enhanced dryness or whatever on their lips. I don't personally find that at all. I just find this to be a hydrating suede lipstick, if that makes sense. I don't know what wizardry Westman Atelier has done with these lipsticks, but I'm here for it. I want every single shade. Like I am a huge raving fan for these lipsticks. And it takes a lot for me to like get to a point with a lipstick where I'm like, I want every shade. Like the only other brand I've kind of done that with is like Lisa Eldridge. I also feel that way about the Hermes lipsticks, but these even pip my Hermes. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this formula, but they are special, you guys. They are a special, special lipstick, and I'm obsessed with them. Obsessed. All right, we did it. We made it through all of my speed reviews. I'm sure there's a couple of products here and there that I might be missing, but I think that's kind of everything for now, hopefully. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions. What do you guys think? Anything that you are eyeing off, anything that you have that you love or disagree with. Overall, I'm pretty happy with most things. There's not a lot of things that I'm like, oh, I'm, I regret picking that up, which is great. I try really, really, really hard to make every product I bring in work for me because I can't return it easily. And like I said, I, I buy it most of the time. So if something's not working for me, like it's like I've tried everything and it doesn't mean that it's a bad product at all. It just might mean that it just doesn't work for me and my makeup style or my skin chemistry, that kind of a thing. But overall, I'm pretty happy with, with this large haul of makeup that I've recently brought in. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Hopefully that was helpful in some way, shape or form. If you made it this far, I'm sure this was a very long one. So you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate you. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye.